Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and back for another trading lesson. Today's lesson is on multiple time frame analysis. I think this is a topic that is super, super important, yet it's a topic that most of you don't understand or you don't even use. I see so many traders that use, they trade in a vacuum. They might trade off a one minute chart or a two minute chart, and they're not looking at the daily charts or the 60 minute chart. So this particular lecture, which lecture, which is about 30 minutes, covers all of that stuff, guys. See, using multiple time frame analysis, guys, is really important because not only will it help you get better entries, it will also help you determine targets as well as when to know not to get into certain positions, right? You need to know when it's bad to take a position and sometimes using a higher time frame or a lower time frame will help you do that, guys. So this is a very, very important topic. Like I said, it's only about 30 minutes, but you don't wanna miss it. We're gonna head over to the computer in just a second uh, and talk about that, guys. So again, multiple time frame analysis, guys, very, very, very important. Many of you might look at one time frame, but the more information you have, the more confirmation you have, the better your decision making will be, whether that's buying a car or buying a stock. The more information you know about something, the more informed you are, the better your results will be. As always, guys, if you have not already done so, go to livetraders.com and download this wonderful, incredible, free ebook okay livetraders.com guys this is the best ebook in the business it's not fluff it's not bs there's real genuine information in here it's not some marketing ploy you want to learn about um, different levels of trading you want to learn about uh, psychology and order entry and all that good stuff guys that is in this free ebook as well as many 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 charts okay so go to livetraders.com to download your free copy of Trader's Guide to Success. So, without further ado guys, let's get to it. Multiple time frame analysis. Jared Wesley, signing out. All right guys, so today's topic is multiple time frame analysis. Um, I see a lot of traders out there trading in vacuums. Uh, what that simply means is picking a one minute or two minute time frame and just going with it. Now, it's not that you can't trade in a vacuum. It's not that you can't make money doing that sometimes, but you have to ask yourself, why? Why would you want to? If you're going to buy something, anything, whether it's a car, whether it's a new house, don't you want pretty much as much information as you can get on that product so that you can make a more informed decision? Well, this is exactly why multiple time frame analysis is important. We want to make a more informed decision on the stock that we are trading. And by looking at more time frames, you're going to get a better overall picture rather than just trading in a vacuum. And you can get away with that once in a while, but big picture, usually you can't. Okay, so it's going to get us a look, guys, with a pattern within a pattern. So this is gonna allow us to refine some of our entry points in shorter time frames when the longer time frame provides the bias. This right here is what we use it for, I think, most often, especially when we're talking about gappers, okay? To determine when a shorter time pattern, when a shorter time frame pattern may fail. This is the area that I know I use it for frequently, but many of you need to start using it for more frequently, okay? What I mean by this, and I'll show you an example in a couple of minutes, is there are times when you're gonna take a trade and it's already at resistance, but you can't see the resistance because it's on a higher time frame. You're looking at the vacuum on a one minute chart and your one minute chart's so cluttered with one minute bars that you can't see the huge five or 15 minute pivot sitting right above you, 10, 20 cents above you. So this will let you know in the shorter time frame, in this case, a one or a two minute time frame, uh, might fail because the higher time frame is extended or you're at resistance or so on and so forth, okay? It can also help you determine when a longer time frame pattern may fail, right? The shorter time frame begins the failure pattern first, right? Shakeout, uh, breakout bar failure, M tops, W bottoms, etc. And then you can sit there and go, you know what? The shorter time frame is telling me something about the higher time frame. Okay, so kind of the opposite of this above. And then obviously to determine 
void, uh, how much room you have to trade a stock to see if, if time frames are in alignment. Because the goal at the end of the day, guys, is to get as many time frames as you can in alignment. Why? Because the higher time frame represents bigger money, guys. There's more money in a monthly chart than there is in a one minute chart. There's more money in a five minute chart than there is in, or in a daily chart than there is in a five minute chart. So if you can get those time frames in alignment, there's a higher likelihood that you'll make more money from it because there's commitment in that specific direction. Okay, so the other thing to consider, guys, is multiple time frames provide different pictures, which communicate different things. In this case, the direction of price, right? At times, a different time frame can give that picture, right? Meaning you're going to get different pictures in different time frames. The goal in a perfect world, and we do not trade in a perfect world, the goal is to get the picture to match across all time frames. How hard is that? Nearly impossible. But that doesn't mean the picture has to exactly match. It just simply means you want the higher time frame showing you what the lower time frame is. So, you know, we use that top down approach, higher time frame bias, lower time frame entry. That's what we're going after. So, it doesn't mean, for example, it doesn't mean you have to have a daily three bar play with a one minute three bar play. Does that happen sometimes? Sure, that happens, but that's not what I'm talking about. And what I'm talking about is daily strength lower time frame pattern, strategy, whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, so let's take a look, for example, all right? More reliable entry due to a higher time frame strength, right? Due to higher time frame strength. So if you take a look at the daily, let's start with the top down. You have a chart here that's been a little choppy. It moves higher, it pulls back, it bounces, it pulls back, it bounces. But right here in that 3650 area, give or take, Stock is really struggling, okay? So what does that mean to us? It means that we probably want this stock to get over this area before we take it on a lower time frame. Well, that's exactly what happens here. You get a little, little bit of a pseudo three bar play. I say pseudo because the wide range bar didn't break resistance, right? But you're breaking above this area right here. And then what you're gonna look for as the daily is breaking resistance, you want to break the resistance with a lower time frame pattern. Make sense? This is what I mean by multiple time frames are in alignment. The daily, which you're doing well over 10 million shares, is climbing, and as it breaks the double top, it gives you the pattern. Now, is the entry slightly before it breaks? It is a little bit, but it's close enough you'll probably take it. Okay, so as you're breaking out of a double top resistance area, you're drilling down to find the entry. See, this is, this is where you're gonna get a better, more refined entry. What I mean by this is instead of just buying the daily at 36.70, whatever this area is, you're going to buy the three bar play here a little bit early at like maybe 36.25 and look at the stop. Now you can have a stop at 35.75 or 35.80. Over here, you had to have a stop below the low and below the low, as we can see, is like 35.40. So now we're getting a 40 cent better stop loss because we're using the lower time frame to refine the entry and not just refine the entry, refine the stop loss, which inherently gives us a better risk to reward. So when this thing popped up to close to 38 bucks, if you had used the daily, you get in a 36.60 or whatever it is, and now you have a dollar plus on the stop loss, and all of a sudden, you get one to one. You drill down though, and you get an entry at 36.20 with a stop at 35.80, it's 40 cents. Now the move up to 38 becomes a $1.60 on a 40 cent stop, and now you make four to one. Instead of one to one, you made four to one. So not only did you get a better entry, you used the higher time frame chart as your bias, so the lower time frame entry is far more secure. Make sense? Right, because you're buying the lower time frame within the higher time frame, and in doing so, getting a tighter stop loss and a better risk to reward, and it's just as safe, just as secure, because you're using the daily as your buy. See how they, they kind of complement each other? You go back and forth on those things? This is the importance of multiple time frame analysis. Okay? Our job, once we get the higher time frame bias, is to drill down and find that lower time frame entry. So here's an example, all right, from a gapper from a little while back. 
You have a stock that's gapping under a wide range green bar. It's a pretty significant green bar. It's a four hour green bar, a little bottoming tail. So not only are you gapping under the green bar here, you're gapping under the pivot support area, right? You had this little blast off area, re retested it here, bounce, retested it here, bounce, retested it here, bounce. So three or four times it's tested 154 and bounced every time. So you're not going to trade this until you're under 154, at least not on the short side, right? So you get the gap down. All of a sudden, you immediately think to yourself, wow, it finally broke support, right? Every time it tested 155, 154, it bounced all four times. This time it's gapping under it. Therefore, it should have room to drop. Our job, take this bearish bias that we have on the daily, the higher time frame, and drill down to the lower time frame. There's your topping tail shake from the early morning, and then you get what? A three or four bar play at 151.50, and it drops. That's it, 151.50 by 152.25, 75 cent stop, and you're already a dollar on this thing in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And you can see right here, it's going to take another leg down. Right? It's gonna take another leg down. Also, we can go within the time frame, within it again, right? So not only do we start with the daily, we drill down to the five, and I, I like this pattern, I love the pattern, but I wanna drill down again just to see the pattern within the pattern. Well, that topping tail represented what? A green bar ignored, a GBI, right? So not only are the is the gap weak, you're seeing on the lowest time frame here, not the lowest, but a low time frame that the sellers engulfed the buyer. So when it gapped down, it immediately on the two minute chart went higher. The sellers came in and immediately pushed it lower. And then what happened? We consolidated out at 151.50. This is a no brainer trade. Like if you don't take this trade, you're not gonna take any trade. You're gapping under a green bar, major shock value. You're gapping under three pivots, major shock value. If you're not taking that, one second here, guys. I'm going to lighten my load even a little more. Order um, fill. Okay. On, uh, on AON. All right. So we're gapping down. And we're looking inside the gap now. And we're getting an engulfing bar and a consolidation. This is picture perfect. This is how trading is done. Okay. Take the higher time frame. Shock value bearish bias. Drill down, look at how the topping tail was created. Wow, nice engulfing bar. And then choose either the breakdown on the two or the three or four bar play on the five. It's the same trade. It's the same trade. Okay, now let's switch gears. Same idea, but a completely different type of play. So now let's take a daily chart that's up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. Wide range, couple, two, three, super wide range. Look at this volume spike on this day right here. 61 all the way up to 64, 65 bucks. Huge move, huge volume on both of these days. You're up a ton, a ton. And then you get this. The question is, if you had to, if you had to enter this, enter this, sorry, on the daily, you have to wait for the daily bar to close get in at like 64.50 and put a stop at 67, right? Put a stop at 67. One sec, guys. Okay. Now you're looking at that, you're going, that's a $3 stop, 250 on the stop. If we drill down, we get a better entry. So this stock rips. Okay, it absolutely just takes off and rips. So now we have what? An extended move far from the moving average inside of another extended move far from the moving average. So you're not just looking at this two minute climactic parabolic in a vacuum, you're getting extra confirmation of, of really just how thoroughly, utterly extended this stock is because the daily. So you could look at this and go from 64 to 67. Many of you would look at this and go, that's not climactic, Jared, that's not parabolic. It looks parabolic, but $3 move on a $60 stock is only like 5%, that's nothing. 
But then you realize it went from 55 to 67 in a seven day period. Now your opinion is a lot different. You go, you know, it was pseudo parabolic, pseudo climactic, meaning almost climactic. But then once you combine it with the daily, you go, holy shnikes, I have to short this thing. So now you get in 66.50, stop at 67. See the difference? 64.50 versus 67. 250 stop, here it's a 50 cent stop. Drops, first target area is 65.50. Two to one, moving average, not quite 50% retracement and does what? 100% retracement. And now you can see this bar right here is actually way down here. Right? If you go back to the daily, this is a wide range red bar. So you would have shorted it under this green bar at like 64.30. Your stop's up at 67.20, whatever it is. Okay. Instead, you got in on the two minute. So we drilled down to the lower time frame to get a better entry. This likely happened in the opposite of the last chart. See, the last chart right, the last chart, we started with the daily gap. In this chart, we likely were scanning, right, and we found the two minute chart and said, wow, this is extended. Then we drilled to the higher time frame. We did it backwards, right, we did it backwards. Okay, I want that to be a little bit clear. So, you can drill, or sorry, you can start with the daily gap and then drill down. You can start with the lower time frame and then go up. But the key is to always look at all time frames all the time. There's a lot of alls in there. Always look at all time frames all the time. That's the goal. That's the key. That's how you're going to get the clearest picture. And you want the clearest picture because that's the most information available to you. And the more information you have, the more likely you are to make a better informed decision or a more informed decision. Now, let's switch gears again. Let's switch gears one more time. So, so far, we've used a higher time frame and drilled down to get a better entry. Now we used the lower time frame and went up to get more security. Now, we're going to do that again, but this is gonna help us know where our target is. Now we're gonna use the higher time frame for target finding. So. We have a stock that's gapping it down using the higher time frame first. You drill down and you go, wow, we're breaking under 2120. Right? We're breaking under 2120. Wide range bar, narrow range bar drop. We talk about three bar plays in here all the time. I did a lesson on three bar plays a week or two ago. Okay? Wide range bar, narrow bar, 2080, stop 21. Beautiful. But take a look at the higher time frame at roughly like $19.70, give or take. So when this stock gets close to that area, it's what I call a hard target. You have to know, have to know that your target is right in that high $19 range. So if you got in here at 2080, you might simply shoot for two to one and go, you know what? I have a 20 cent stop. I'm going to shoot for 2040 right here and just be done with it. That's fine. But for those of you that are looking for more, those of you that are bar by bar trailing or pivot trailing, your firm target on this, your hard target on this is like 1970, 1980 area. And then you look at this and you go, hmm, normally I'm going to add a lot here at 2020, lower the stop to 2040. But if you add, just understand it's a scalp ad. It's not a full ad, it's a scalp ad, because as soon as you break 20 bucks, you're already thinking, you know what? Target's coming. Remember, targets are areas, they are not specific pennies. This thing could drop to 1950, it could stop at 20. It's gonna be in that range, that 50 cent area. But in this case, you're using multiple time frames to know where your target area is. Okay, to know where your target area is. Now, I'm going to do one more, one more. This one is a very special chart. All right, this is an area that I'm going to say 
95% of you guys listening and watching don't contemplate, don't think about, or don't even just don't even use. Well, which is the same as don't think about, don't contemplate. Okay. This is a good slide to put a piece of paper over. All right. It's a good slide to put a piece of paper over the 15 minute. Let's start on the two minute. All right, I want to spend a little bit of time here. I want to start on the two minute. I want you guys to ignore the 15 minute. And because I said that, you're staring right at the 15 minute, right? It's like saying, hey, don't think about a pink elephant. It's the first thing that pops into your head, okay? So this stock moves up. Now remember, this is a micro time frame, two minute micro time frame, okay? So now, one sec, guys, I want to adjust something. So two minute micro time frame, And what we get here is a stock that moved higher, pulled back and did what? Put in a little M top, M top here, okay? So once we get under this area right here, about 64 bucks, you should expect this stock to retest the low, right? Because on a micro time frame, that's all we're looking at. We're not looking at the other chart. We're looking at the two. You're just looking here and going, what can I expect from the two minute? So you have a little M top here, pullback. You start moving below support, moving below the moving average. Okay. Drop, bounce, drop. You come down to what? The low of the day, which you expect to see some buyers at the low of the day. Right, and then this happens. This is a two minute sell setup. SS stands for sell setup. You would be within your right to short this if you were trading in a vacuum. Tell me why. Well, I'll explain why. If you're only trading in a vacuum, this is key. You're not looking at any other time frame. You are only trading in a vacuum. You are now technically in a micro downtrend, right? This is your stage two uptrend, stage three double top, stage four downtrend. Drop, bounce, drop, bounce. Where are you bouncing to? Minor resistance right here, right? Level two resistance. You are under the moving average. It's roughly a 40 to 50% retracement. That's the pivot high. That's the pivot low. It's about a 40 to 50% retracement. It has a topping tail. It has a red bar. I mean, if you are calculating all of the pattern boosters out of this course, you are just racking them up right now. I mean, I'll do just a couple quick ones, right? 50% retracement, there's one. Below the moving average, there's another one. Uh, at minor resistance or level two resistance, there's another one. Topping tail, there's another one. Narrow range doji bar, there's another one. Red bar, there's another one. That's six. Remember, you're not looking at the 15 minute. Take it off the screen. Put a piece of paper over it. You're not looking at it. You're sitting there going, this is going to be a sweet short. It's going to be a sweet short play. First targets the double bottom support area. So you're going to get in here somewhere around like 63.25. You got like a 15 cent stop on this thing. And your target's like, shoot, I don't know, 50 to 70 cents down to the lows. What is that about 62.60? And you're in at 63.25 is a 65 cent target. First target with like a 15 or 20 cents, at least three to one, at least. And you're going to take some off down here. Why? Because it's a double bottom. You're going to take some off. And that's what you think because you only looked, only looked at the two minute chart. And then it triggers you in, immediately leaves a bottoming tail and rips higher. And you can't understand why you stopped out on a trade that gave you six or seven or eight pattern boosters. And then ultimately went higher for the rest of the day. And you can't figure it out. And yet the answer is right under your nose. It's sitting on the 15 minute chart. So now let's go to the 15 minute chart. Stock gaps up over resistance. 
goes higher. That's that move up here. Pulls back. Leaves a bottoming tail. It's at just above support now. Above the rising moving average. And then rips. Now you're going, son of a bitch. I just shorted a stock inside of a 15 minute buy setup. When in doubt, you always go with the higher time frame. Always. There's more money in the higher time frame. There's more commitment in the higher time frame. Okay? So I want you to think about this. As it says in the note, the failure of the cell setup right here confirms the buy setup over here. As this cell setup failed, that failure was the confirmation of the buy setup over here. So as a rule, the failure of the lower time frame pattern, sorry, the failure of the lower time frame pattern will signal our entry on the higher time frame. That's that. But no, you didn't look at that because you were so engrossed in this little micro downtrend on the two minute that you weren't looking at the 15 minute. Now, another quick question, rhetorical. On a three bar pullback, right, which is basically a buy setup on a 15 minute. So if you take a 15 minute chart and do a three bar pullback, how often will the two minute be in a micro downtrend? The answer is almost always. Why? Well, one 15 minute bar is roughly seven two minute bars. Right? One 15 minute bar is roughly seven. So if you have three red bars on a 15 minute chart, you're going to have like over 20 red bars on a two minute chart. Now, granted, you might have you know, a little green bar here, right? That's that little topping tail right in there. There's the topping tail on the 15. There's this little green bar bounce. But basically, a three or four, four bar pullback on a 15 minute chart is going to be like 15 or 20 red bars on a two minute chart. Many of you probably didn't even think about that. You're probably not even drilling down thinking about, wow, what would this look like on a five or a 15 minute chart? And then when you're on the 15, what does it look like on a two? You have to be thinking that way. So when you're trading, guys, on your order entry screen, you better have at least three or four time frames up there. Okay, see, when I create a gap list in the morning, we already know the daily chart's good because we scanned using the daily chart. So I don't have to recheck the daily chart. Make sense? So when we put our gap list together, we're using the 60 and the daily to start with. So once I put those on the list, I don't have to worry about the daily. But I am going to have a 15 minute, a five minute, a two minute, and a one minute. My order entry screen has a one minute on it, a two minute on it, a five minute, and a 15. And my other monitors have all time frames on them. Monthly, weekly, daily, 60. Because I believe you should look at all time frames every time you take a trade. Every time. Aon stop down to 164.30. Aon stop to 164.30. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So guys, we just went over multiple scenarios in which higher time frame can keep you out of a bad trade like this two minute sell setup. The failure of the two minute sell setup helps us get into the 15 minute buy setup. We also looked at multiple time frames for what? a better entry with regard to getting a tighter stop loss. We also used multiple time frames to show us where a target area was. Are you starting to see just how important using multiple time frames is? And if you don't do this, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. You know how easy it is to put up an extra time frame on your on your monitor? Instead of just having the two minute on your monitor, put the 15 next to it, the two minute, five minute next to it. It doesn't take up that much real estate. Just do it. No, you don't need eight monitors or 15 monitors. You just need anywhere between one and three. If you go as many as four, fine. You know, obviously you're a little bit insecure if you trade with four monitors, but it's okay. I'm just kidding. But you get the point, guys. Okay. 
One to three monitors is all you need, and there's still no excuse not to have multiple time frames on it. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that lesson on multiple time frame analysis. I find it to be one of the more important topics we talk about because far too many traders trade in vacuums and they get themselves in trouble. And then I get an email and, hey, Jared, why did this fail? And I literally say to them, did you look at the higher time frame? So guys, let's do one last thing here. One last thing. Let's blow this up. Now, why do we have a red bar this week? Why? Why have I said for the last two to three weeks in the newsletter, we're going to get a pullback in the market using a higher time frame to give me a lower time frame bias? Unwall's made money shorting the queues three days in a row. Why? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bottoming tails 10. 10 weeks into resistance equals a pullback. There's your triple top on the daily. Pivot, drop, pivot, drop, pivot, drop. Extended down, bounced. Extended up, it's gonna drop. It's going to drop. Staking the reputation on this, it will drop. Multiple time frames are gonna help you trade better on lower time frames. So the market rules all, right? Rising tide lifts all boats, okay? Well. Now in the next coming days and coming weeks, you should be turning towards a more bearish mentality. Does that mean bearish forever? No, it just means in the coming days and coming weeks, we're likely to see a more pronounced pullback, perhaps down to 260, 270, 260, because we're extended into resistance, using the higher time frame to guide us on the lower time frame. That simple, okay? So again, hope you guys learned a little bit from that. And I will do this again next week, all right? Have a good one, guys. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.